Before we start, I want you to hit that red subscribe button so that you never miss out on any of our videos. Hey guys, what's up? Welcome back to David Dodge. You've heard about billionaires' reckless purchases. You heard about the insanely expensive things they own. But something you may not have given much thought to was the extent to just how badly they spend their billions or how far they go to become billionaires. In this video, we will be talking about 10 billionaires who went completely bankrupt. Number one, Patricia Kludge. When Kludge divorced her then husband, she received a hefty sum in the settlement, immediately skyrocketing her net worth. Thinking about the future, she put in the majority of that money into a vineyard, which she had big plans for. However, things don't usually go as planned. The housing market completely crashed and she lost everything she invested. It got so bad, she had to start selling her personal belongings such as jewelry just to stay afloat. Yikes, wouldn't want to be Patricia. Number two, Sean Quinn. Quinn was considered Ireland's richest person for a time. He started with some successful investments into the plastic, gas, and hotel industry, as well as purchasing a stake in an Irish bank. Investments kickstarted his fortune, but they were also a source of his downfall. It began when he invested pretty badly in a few banks, being forced to give up almost his entire wealth. In late 2011, he filed for bankruptcy, claiming he had only half a million pounds remaining in assets. Number three, Alan Stanford. From billionaire financer to life imprisonment, Stanford was convicted of fraud. In 2009, the SEC began an investigation into the Stanford Financial Group as well as another investigation solely for the chairman, Alan Stanford. It was deducted that he had illegally sold $8 million worth in high yield certificates of deposit in a huge Ponzi scheme. He went to prison for 110 years on charges of obstruction of justice, money laundering, mail and wire fraud, as well as on other counts. Number four, Bernard Bernie Madoff. Madoff was considered the king of Ponzi schemes. For over two decades, he was able to swindle and deceive numerous investors of billions of dollars with what he considered his best strategy, split strike conversation. His scheme consisted of promising his shareholders high and unwavering returns. He was charged with $64.8 million fraud, and it was assumed that before being convicted, he had most likely amassed billions of dollars in personal fortune. Number five, Elizabeth Holmes. Holmes was made popular when Times Magazine included her in their 100 Most Influential People of 2015 list. She immediately became known as the youngest self-made female billionaire in that year. She was featured because her healthcare technology company was able to reach billions of dollars in valuation, making a significant profit. However, like the rest of the people on this list, her fame and fortune did not last long. With federal agents stalking her every move, accusing her company of cheating their investors with their innovative blood testing technology, her credibility and bank account went plummeting. Forbes released a statement about her claiming she was one of the world's most disappointing leaders claiming her new personal wealth to be zero. Number six, Ike Batista. One of Brazil's richest and the world's seventh richest man, Batista was able to accumulate his riches through his Brazilian natural resource company. In just a few years time, Batista went from owning 30 billion in assets to being broke. He was found guilty of bribing a governor which led him to being arrested on accounts of money laundering and insider trading. In just one year alone, he lost almost 20 million and owed the bank massive debts when his empire finally crumbled. Number seven, Bajugaruf Gurmanson. Brewing industry tycoon and owner of the West Ham football team, Gurmanson filed for bankruptcy in 2009. Apparently, he had accumulated a debt of over 750 million. At the time, it was Iceland's largest bankruptcy filing. Most of the blame can go to the declining economy in Iceland at the time, because ultimately, that's all that happened. Isn't it scary that sometimes so far out of your control can cause you to go from riches to rags so quickly? Number eight, Vijay Malaya. Before Kingfisher Airlines were swiped from the face of the earth, they were owned by liquor tycoon, Vija Malaya. In 2012, news traveled that Malaya had piled up millions in debt to banks with no plan of returning them. Soon enough, the people he owed came looking for him, which is when he fled the country using a diplomatic passport. 
Although he has yet to return to India to face his crimes, Balaya was accused of multiple charges and added up to 100 million. Number 9. Hung Young Waii. Waii is the chairman of China Jikosh Holdings, situated in Hong Kong, of which he owns 75% of the stake with his wife. There was a recent stock market dip, leading to the stock falling over 90% in only two days' time. Wing Yi's personal wealth was reduced by $2 billion. Number 10. Alberto Villar. Villar has made a hefty profit through his company, Omar Rendu Investments Advisors. In early 2000, there was a violent stock market sell-off, which negatively impacted his personal finances, as well as his company since the value of the company depleted. A few years later, his partner and him were arrested for fraud and money laundering which is what the two men have resorted to with the company not bringing in enough money. This brings us to the end of our video. I hope you enjoyed it. Hit like if you did, and don't forget to subscribe to our channel so that you don't miss any of our videos in the future. Also, watch the two videos that are on your screen because I'm sure you'll love them. With that, I'll see you in the next video.